welcome to my second class where we are going to motivate ourselves rather than learning anything we are going to motivate ourselves that why we should actually uh, study the hypersonic aerodynamics it is we are still in the introduction part of our lecture and uh, we are trying to get some basic information which will actually give you a little bit motivation towards learning this particular topic speed thrills we all know that speed actually thrills we all know speed thrills and uh, i'm not adding it it kills kind of thing we'll see that later why it kills but speed definitely no doubt about it thrills initially when people started traveling the the the, the most ancient mode of transportation was your own legs you have to walk that the only way you can actually transport yourself from any place to other place but later on we uh, gathered some technology and uh, then we started actually using the machines for transportation so the very first thing we got about transportation was uh, that automobile so we entered into the automobile age so in the automobile age we were actually able to transfer it faster than we can walk and also without we can actually tra travel tirelessly without any uh, no uh, needing again rest and rest and uh, then we can uh, that we can we achieve some kind of uh, uh, higher speed there but that speed was not good enough to actually satisfy and quench our thirst so we went for the higher age some say sky age and then that also are not enough to go to the space age and all these are actually uh, giving you extra mile extra miles per hour extra miles actually uh, in, uh, in the uh, in your speed apart from that we are also gaining extra altitude in automobile age we can only travel on the surface of earth no matter how high you are traveling in the sky age we can actually get airborne we go in the space sky and then we travel at the higher speed in the space age we can even go further high further away from the from the earth and then we can actually travel in the space and then we can travel with a very fast speed so these three things uh, we have seen in our traveling uh, in in the in the in the in the history of human travel in automobile age in automobile age look at here the most and the very very ancient type of car looking very primitive and it's not even looking like a car nobody will buy even something like you know a little bit 1000 or 2000 dollars it's very very antique but this is one of the most expensive and uh, very uh, lucrative car at the time and uh, people were people love to would love would have loved to have it you can see that the woman is feeling very proud and uh, to have this car Uh, I don't know exactly, perhaps it is Mercedes Benz, or I don't know exactly which car is this, but it is very uh, uh, expensive and and a very very luxurious car at the time. Then came, there was another uh, another car came. See, it's a, it's a it's a Mercedes Benz. Will you believe it? Mercedes Benz. They made a car, so looking uh, just to someone can sit on this. Very, uh, they try to provide a lot of comfort, and they have a lot of levers here and there to control and uh, steer the vehicle. and then we have some kind of machine which is actually traveling you and now the most modern and uh, uh, and recent development and highly uh, 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 sophisticated kind of uh, that um, uh, uh, suv available the car is there that's what is that uh, advancement you have seen in your automobile age and then it is like almost an stagnation now if there is a limit you can go uh, into go in the case of automobile with the with the speed you can't have actually any speed but after that uh we went into the sky age and the sky age very beginning of the sky age started with the multi wing and very very uh, very uh, soft very uh, rugged kind of a structure we had and it's not even looking uh, looking it's looking very fragile also and very scary, scary feeling it look like a whole a uh, cage is actually flying because for, uh, because safety was a big concern so we uh, tried to give a lot of uh, struts and and the structure uh, structural um, uh, that uh, elements to support the whole uh, structure and uh, it was looking very uh, primitive it's a primitive idea i can't say it's a dirty kind of thing but looking like a cage and then inside the cage the whole cage is flying and human is also flying very early type of planes were looking like this then came uh, something like a little bit sophisticated little bit advanced in progress the planes are there this is bi wings still bi wings are there so two 
uh, wings are there to produce the little bit extra lift and then plane is traveling uh, uh, it's actually uh, if you can see clear carefully this is actually a sea plane it can land on the sea and uh, this is this will give the balance to this will take the main load while landing on the sea and these two uh, extra uh, uh, boy will be there so we should try to uh, try to balance the plane the plane will not topple then came the very sophisticated uh, age what is called space age in the in the space age we have very very fascinating kind of vehicle and these vehicles have not actually been um, uh, actualized in practice and had not been manufactured and been used at this moment but artists have made a lot of impression and they have given various types of space age vehicle this is one of these how see how sophisticated and how uh, fascinating this is looking actually and it's, it's, it's not only traveling in the sky it's going the space much beyond the sky limits very fascinating isn't it and its size its size will be huge it's not it's not looking like a toy it's a huge size as per the concept of design it will be very huge size you can see uh, imagine the size of this vehicle by thinking that this is small white what you can see here this is a, a small window pans are there this window pans will be something like two to three types uh, size of the human kind so this will host at least uh, 10000 people and then you can travel from here to there in a very uh, short span or you can actually extra planetary uh, travel is also possible this is uh, most fascinating uh, this is most fascinating uh, this is not just uh, giving you extra planetary travel this is actually uh, showing you that you can live in the space and this uh, small this uh, this this vehicle is not just a space station this is actually uh, you can imagine it to be a, a whole a small country maybe uh, some look at the this white spots suppose this white spots are the window pans which are actually having the size of 10 human being 10 normal human being so if i say that even 1 crore or, or something like um, uh, 50 lakh or 80 lakh or 1 crore people can live into this so 1 crore means something like uh, uh, how much uh, uh, a small a small country it's a small country it's a small country living in the space there also will have boundaries if you is actually future uh, uh, future uh, expectation on something like uh, if the earth is become too crowded so you have to live in the space so this kind of machine you can make and then you can live in the space with all the provisions uh, provided there then you can uh, do I can do everything there uh, maybe some kind of uh, provision will be available to defy the uh, gravity uh, the, that uh, weightlessness also and then you can have some gravity you can play also you can play football you can play the hockey you can play cricket there because um, uh, that uh, that kind of provision is, is, is possible if if uh, the progress has happened sufficiently and then we'll have uh, there also will be some boundaries not like you can grab other boundaries we'll have celestial uh, uh, that uh, locations uh, on earth we have longitude and, le and latitude on the space you can have celestial locations some uh, some distances and maybe the uh, angular distances from uh, some fixed stars and then we'll fix it that this belongs to the particular country particular type of people they live there and then okay this is very fascinating area this is the space age we come there and space age if you go in the space age there is no other doubt that you have to explore the hypersonic speeds that only will survive you in the case of uh, space age otherwise uh, that uh, sky age um, maybe uh, that uh, supersonic speeds will be enough for the sky age but if you are going to go in the space the supersonic speed will not be enough especially when they're doing re-entry suppose someone w someone want to visit the earth then during re-entry the speed goes to the in a very very high something like uh, 35 times uh, of the of the um, of the sound speed so Mach number 35 that is that is actually lying in a very high range of the um, of the um, hypersonic range so if humanity has to survive and go along the thing you have to go in the space age and a space age is possible only if you actually deal with the hypersonic range of the speeds look at the a small situation the moon around the sun here is the moon going around the sun uh, can you sorry uh, it's moon ar oh, sorry it's, it's a moon around the uh, moon around the earth it's not sun moon around the earth so if moon is going around the earth then uh, it, it it must be having some speed what is the speed someone oh, you can guess actually uh, on the average if you find moon goes around the sun around the earth with uh, a speed of one kilometer per second can you imagine one kilometer per second you just uh, blink your eyes and it is 500 500 meter away and just in one second one second one kilometer away oh god what is speed 
looks like uh, if you if you if you try to find out what is the mac mac number is 0.3 3 mac no it's not 3 mac 3 mac is corresponding to the speed of sound at the earth surface at ntp normal temperature and pressure but if you talk about moon's situation what is the surface temperature of moon it's not that uh, it's that much in that much what you have in the earth because there is no atmosphere there so this mic this if the earth is the speed of sound is very very low on the moon then then the then the uh, speed of the moon which which it revolves or ro uh, goes around around the around the around the earth will be much higher so if it, if it uh, if it one one kilometer per second it becomes something like 10 to maybe 10 10 mac number then earth around the sun is or is some further more fascinating earth around the sun goes almost 30 kilometer per second what a speed it has something like if you uh, 300 if 300 uh, 20 meter uh, per second is they can have the speed sound sound to the uh, speed to the sound then earth will have 30 into 3 almost 90 mach number earth revolves around the sun with a with a mach number 90 90 mach oh fascinating it's a it's a huge highly fascinated topic to study the hypersonics and i'm really uh, happy to take the take up this subject and i'm sure you guys also will be motivated to study this so let us just uh, begin our journey towards uh, towards the uh, hypersonic we'll have some hypersonic transport vehicles let us see in the in the in present a uh, present time if you someone has to go from kuala lumpur this is actually kuala lumpur malaysia to uh, from uh, from 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 Kuala Lumpur to actually he has to go to the United Kingdom Heathrow Airport it will take something like um, it, it take off takes off from here at 12:35 local time and goes to and and lands there something like 13 13 uh, that uh, 13 hour 10 minutes 13 13 10 so uh, then uh, almost after after 12 hours actually so it will be something like uh, uh, 12 hours uh, that uh, is it's a local time so exactly it takes them 30 hours 13 hours 40 minutes 13 hours 40 minutes the distance is something like uh, 6,000 miles so 6,000 miles is covered 13 hours 20 minutes if you can make a supersonic this is the uh, this is the travel with the with the uh, subsonic vehicle high subsonic vehicle like uh, some traveling with the Mac 8 or, or Mac, Mac sorry Mac 0 0.8 or 0 0.85 kind of thing if you can make a hypersonic vehicle which can travel at the Mach 5 or 6 the whole distance which normally takes 13 hours near about 14 hours to travel can be covered in just two hours wow it's, it's a fascinating how much time you can save if you can make this thing a hypersonic vehicle which can travel Mach 7 to 12 can take man from New York to Tokyo in just less than two hours why this uh, this uh, can someone just uh, think that why this New York to Tokyo has been taken because they are just almost opposite opposite side of the globe from this side to that side during World War two uh, America designed uh, plane which um, uh, plane to actually go uh, without any stop non-stop goes to the Japan bombs it and comes back again without uh, non-stop very high endurance very high endurance that was a biggest uh, step and, and it's a very bold step you take uh, you travel from US to a half of the you can actually go uh, around the globe without uh, without uh, stopping anywhere that uh, that that is supposed to take a very very long time very high endurance but if you can have a hypersonic vehicle now you can do this in just two hours so within two hours you can come to the New York from New York to Tokyo and next two hours you go back so within four hours you have a whole journey to the entire globe Wow so if aerospace will drive the world there's no doubt about it and we have seen this thing very well that uh, the, is the use of aerospace uh, vehicles and uh, and aerospace in the world is getting larger and larger in every area whether it is uh, be it actually the business area or be it is in the in the in the uh, civilian area in fact war area is the main the main re the uh, the main reason aerospace is actually being more and more important for the humankind but if aerospace will drive the world then aerospace will be driven by 
the hypersonic speeds. There's no other go. Supersonic is saturated. It's no longer fills us. So hypersonic is the area which actually will derive the aerospace uh, field, and that's what is our topic now. We are going to study. So welcome to the space age. Thank you.